Hey guys, Eric Martel here, and today we're talking about my most favorite subject, which is financial freedom. What does financial freedom mean? It means that you don't have to go to work every day for you to afford your lifestyle. You have money that's coming in on a regular basis without you having to work for it. I've been financially free since 2018, and I've used real estate to get there. And in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how. I'm not just here to talk to you about achieving financial freedom in theoretical term. I'm here to tell you how to realistically generate enough passive income to achieve financial freedom. Make sure you like and subscribe because I'm gonna be making videos every week to help you achieve financial freedom. So first, what does it mean to achieve financial freedom? It means that you have enough money coming in to pay for all your living expenses and pay for your lifestyle. So passive income is basically cash flow that's coming from your investment after you've paid all the operating expenses from that investment and it's going right into your bank. Being financially free means that you can spend time on things that really matter to you. I'm not talking about some kind of like get rich scheme and getting millionaires and having a Lamborghini and a private jet or anything like that. I'm talking about an investment strategy that's gonna generate passive income that's gonna afford not only pay for your living expenses, but a little bit more and afford you a lifestyle that you wanna live. The first step is really to figure out what is your passive income target. This is the amount of money that you need every month to pay for your living expenses and that little bit more that we talked about. First, you look at all your expenses and you kind of look at the different categories of these expenses and you prepare a budget. You look at how much money you spend on your mortgage, on your insurance, on your property taxes, on your car payments, on clothing, etc. And you go down the list and look at all the amount of money that you spend in each of the category. You don't want to forget your lifestyle, the things that you enjoy doing. How much money do you want to spend every year on travel, on going to a fancy restaurant, on buying the right bottle of wine, that you, uh, that you enjoy so much. Um, so also add that into your budget and then figure out what is that monthly income that would satisfy your needs, that would satisfy your lifestyle. This is your passive income target. The nice thing about this passive income target is that as you are investing in real estate and building that passive income every month, you're feeling that you're really getting closer and closer to your goal. It also helps you realize that if you're buying a Lamborghini that's costing you $1,700 a month in, uh, in lease fees, that it's not getting you closer to your passive income target. It's taking away from your passive income goal. It's making it harder for you to get there. So maybe you don't wanna buy the Lamborghini right away. You wanna wait a little bit later. So you wanna have a pretty good budget here to calculate that passive income target. So you wanna click on the link below. I've written an article about uh, calculating your passive income target and um, just click right here. So you wanna be pretty detailed and you wanna make sure that you cover all the different expenses because this is very important because once you get onto that road, you wanna make sure that uh, you know this is for good for the rest of your life you wanna make sure that you do a very good job with your budget. And then just to make sure, just make sure you add a little buffer in there, just in case some of the things, unexpected expenses happen. Uh, you don't wanna to be too tight and then regret making that decision later on. You can add, as a buffer, you can add between five and 10% or whatever you feel comfortable with. Step two is changing your mindset. What does this mean? You need to realize that society has been geared and, uh, and aligned and focused on getting you to a full-time job. The education system is focused on getting you to a job. All the training is about getting you to a full-time job. And you get some very good skills when you are working full-time, but these skills alone are not gonna get you to passive income. You need additional skills, you need new skills in order to achieve financial freedom. And understanding that and understanding that you need to do that change is the first step. It's actually the second step. But what I mean is it's very important. So that mindset change basically is going to allow you to think differently and view things differently. So instead of uh, wondering uh, about retirement and saving in 401k, you're going to start thinking about how do I generate passive income? How do I generate five, six or $10,000 in passive income to it towards my financial freedom goal? 
This is a very different attitude than you get when you're working full time. You are in the driver's seat. You're not waiting for your boss to tell you what to do. So it also gives you a different point of view on your expenses and your different purchases. Instead of asking, oh, should I buy this car? You're thinking, how can I generate enough passive income to be able to afford to buy this car? So the next step is really finding the right investment for you. Uh, when we're talking about passive income, there are basically two basic options. One of them is dividend stock and real estate. So now that you have the right mindset, all you have to figure out is what is the best investment to get you there. Dividend paying stocks are a great option, but high quality dividend stocks uh, normally average about 3% return a year. Dividend stocks are a very conservative and traditional way of generating passive income. And what I mean by that is gonna, you're going to need a lot more money and it's going to take you a lot longer to get you there. So for example, if you need to have to generate $6,000 a month in passive income, that's $72,000 a year. Uh, if you look at a high quality dividend stock that's paying about 3% return, that means that you're going to need about $2.5 million. You're going to have to spend $2.5 million in stocks that are of these companies in order to generate your $72,000 a month. That's a lot of money. Most people don't have that. And even finding a 3% return dividend portfolio is going to be hard work. Yes, you can find higher dividend uh, returns, but typically these are stocks that are not that high quality. So you can do it if you want. It is, it is possible, but realistically, if you're watching this video, if you're like most people, you don't have two and a half million dollars sitting in the bank. The second option is rental real estate. Simply owning rental real estate is a great way to generate passive income, to generate positive cash flow. Uh, it's very simple to understand. You basically are owning a rental property, you rent it out, you pay for all your expenses, including property management, property taxes, your mortgage, and you're left with a residual amount at the end, which is your net cash flow. That cash flow flows directly into your bank account. And the idea here is that you keep adding more and more properties to your portfolio, adding more and more cash flow, and eventually you've reached your target. So when you're looking at rental real estate, uh, I recommend that you start with single family rentals. Uh, the idea here is that this is a low entry point uh, and it's also very easy for you to get in and ramp up uh, as opposed to going into an apartment building or multifamily. These are the higher entry point. It's a little bit more difficult to get in, in there. And it's also a little bit harder to find these apartment buildings. Uh, single families are all over the place. They're easy to, uh, to find. And um, that way you can easily ramp up your portfolio over time. One of the shortcuts I recommend is buying turnkey rental properties. If you don't have too much time on your hand to go and look for different rental properties and then figuring out uh, the, the contractors and property management and doing all the research, you may want to look into turnkey rental properties. And they buy the distressed property, they renovate it, rent it out, and they connect you, connect all the dots for you. And they basically uh, connect you with the insurance company, the lender, property management, and it's cash flowing from day one. So it's a good way for you to save time to build that in passive income portfolio. So speaking of turnkey providers, you can look at martelturnkey.com right here, shameless plug. But uh, I mean, you can also look at some of the properties that I'm talking about and we make it easy for you to basically build that passive income portfolio. But if you want to do it yourself and you want to learn doing it, uh, we're going to go right into the next step, which is how much money do you need? So one of the biggest advantage of real estate is leverage. That means that with a little bit of money, you get to control a larger asset. A typical turnkey rental is about $100,000 to $150,000. So assuming a $125,000 property, um, you would uh, basically have to put $30,000 down payment for that. And it would cash flow about $300 a month. And cash flow is the amount of money that's left over after the rent has paid for property management, property taxes, insurance, as well as the mortgage. And that goes right into your bank account. Generally speaking, you should be looking at generating about $300 a month per door. With the $30,000 down, that's about 12% cash on cash return. The cash on cash return is one of the most important metrics to determine if this investment is a good investment. 
And if your target is $6,000 a month, you need about 20 houses in order to reach that goal. Or in other words, $600,000 in down payment. So 20 houses, that's all you need to be financially free if your goal is $6,000 a month. That's not bad. So next step is don't wait. Don't wait to have $600,000 in the bank before investing. Realistically, you don't have $600,000 in your bank. So don't wait to save up the full amount before you start investing. Start investing today because every additional rental that you add to your portfolio brings additional passive income. And you can see your passive income portfolio generate getting you closer and closer to that goal. It is important to get started right away because there are tax advantages associated with investing in real estate. You want to take advantage of these tax advantages as soon as possible. That would give you more money. It would reduce the amount of taxes you're paying every year and that sa tax savings can be used to invest in real estate. Once you have the formula, you just have to figure out your final number. How many houses you need to get and how much money in down payment you need. And based on that, you can determine how many years will it take for you to achieve financial freedom, to generate enough passive income. So just to incentivize you, if you start with only two single family rentals and you every year you reinvest that net cash flow into the properties, in only 20 years, you'll be able to generate $6,000 in passive income, which is your target. But how do you make it happen sooner? Which brings us to the next step. Get a side gig if you need it. So look at how long it will take for you to generate that, to reach that passive income goal. If it's too long for you to wait, then you should consider getting a side gig. In my opinion, if you can't save enough money with your regular income, your regular salary, if you can't buy at least one property a year, then you should get a side gig. So some examples of side gig that you can do alongside your, your uh, current job is independent consulting, programming, writing, uh, bartending. All these jobs would actually give you more money for you to invest in real estate. So I know it's a, it's a big ask, but remember it's only temporary. And keep in mind there are also tax advantages of having a side gig. When I was working as an independent consultant, I was able to deduct my cell phone, uh, traveling uh, from, uh, to and from work, uh, my laptop, my internet, and a part of my house that I use as an office. And these tax savings can then be reinvested in real estate. So now you know what to invest in, how much money you need, how long it's going to take you to get there, and how to get there faster. Which brings us to our last step, getting there also known as achieving financial freedom. So again, achieving financial freedom means that now you have time to spend on things that really matter to you. If I enjoy building businesses, I'm an entrepreneur, so I spend a lot of time still, you know, building businesses and uh, enjoying that part of it. If you like to travel, you can spend more time traveling than ever before. So this is the advantage of financial freedom. You have your time back. If you want to continue working full time for that job and still generating that passive income, you can do that too. If you love your job, you can certainly do that. You don't have to quit. We talked about also about the tax advantages of investing in real estate. So there's a lot of tax advantages. The first, the moment you buy your first single family rental, but as you get uh, into financial freedom and you spend all of your time investing in real estate, you get to a status called real estate professional and this really accelerates and gives you additional tax benefits that you don't have if you're not a full-time real estate investor. You have achieved your goal and now you get to enjoy the fruits of your labor. You're not going to live like a king, but no one is going to be able to tell you what to do or not to do. I'm financially free and I get to do whatever I want whenever I want. If I want to go and travel three months in Europe or in Costa Rica, I can do that. I don't have to accumulate enough vacation for me to do that. And when I go, the money is still coming in. I have enough passive income to pay for that travel and all my living expenses and my lifestyle. Once you hit your target goal, you can decide what you want to do. Maybe you want to reach even higher grounds or maybe you're quite satisfied where you are. You decide, but you're the one making the decision, not your boss. Make sure you like and subscribe. I'm going to be posting more and more content uh, to help you achieve financial freedom. And I'm not going to stop until you get there. Thank you and goodbye.